We're still assessing the impact of the February 25th general elections as uh, some aggrieved parties, especially the Labour Party and the PDP, have vowed to contest the results in the court of law. While the INEC chairman and returning officer for the presidential election, Mahmoud Yakubo, on Wednesday declared the candidate of the APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as the winner of the elections, having polled the majority vote of 8.7 million. Let's x-ray the impact of this on the economy. Joining us to do this is Nelson Ekujimi, public affairs mm -hmm. analyst, and he joins us virtually. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. What's your, let's begin with your assessment of the Saturday polls now that we have a president-elect. Thank you very much. The Saturday uh, presidential and national assembly election has come and gone, and the election has been uh, acknowledged as free, fair, successful, and credible by local and international observers. And um, the electoral umpire has fulfilled, you know, the requirements, you know, uh, of the Constitution by declaring a winner who met the constitutional requirements of, you know, uh, having scored the highest number of uh, lawful votes, as well as fulfilling the other condition of uh, having scored 25% of the votes in two thirds of the state states uh, of the federation and the federal capital territory of Uga. So the election has come and gone, and um, the window for those who are aggrieved, you know, is being, you know, uh, is being looked at by those who are aggrieved, who are saying mm. they are going to court. So we must commend them for, you know, for recognizing I that, you know, the dispute me mechanism for, you know, resolving this dispute is that line. Uh, let me come in there. You mentioned one of the requirements for being declared as a winner, which is, of course, having 25% of vote into thirds of the state and the FCT. Would you say that the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, got this 25% at the FCT? Because uh, the results showed that uh, Peter Obi, the Labour Party candidate, scored 61% of vote in that particular region. All right, uh, network issues there. But of course, we're still having this conversation looking at. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Go ahead. The Constitution does not require the candi any candidate to score 25% in any particular state because all the states in Nigeria are equal. And the federal capital territory does not have a superior status to any state, it is the administrative capital of Nigeria. So it is equivalent to a state. But you you are not required to yourself. get a particular uh, percentage of votes in the FCT. So what the law says is that the president, who is, whoever is going to be declared as the president-elect, must score 25% in two-thirds of the states and the federal capital territory, federal making, capital making it 37 states, if you want to look at the... If you want to make, make, take the uh, federal capital territory as a state, so that is what the law says. It does not say you must call 25% in the federal capital territory. Perhaps Thank that's you. one of the loopholes that have to be fixed because that is what some aggrieved parties are latching on. But let's move on to the main focus of today, and that is uh, looking at the PDP candidate, Abubakar Atiku, uh, who has rejected the outcome, describing it as a rape of democracy. And, of course, we see the Labour Party candidate, Peter Obi, also saying that the will of the people has been suppressed, and uh, both of them have vowing to uh, explore all legal and peaceful options to reclaim their mandate in the court of law. What implications do you think this would have on the economy? Have any implication? And uh, I think we need to remind Nigerians: these two parties who are claiming they were wrongs jointly addressed a press conference shortly before the declaration of the winner of the election, and they both claimed that the election has fallen short of the, the of their own standards and we all you we all know that the standards that the election is supposed to you know fulfill is the standard as set by the constitution and not the standard as set by a political party or a candidate these two political parties the pdp and the lp jointly said the election didn't meet their own standards 
And just yesterday, both candidates of these two parties have come out to claim victory. And, you know, funnily enough, one of the candidates of the parties, I mean the PDP, came out and said the MP candidate was only crying wolf. That, you know, the way he was running his campaign, there was no way he could have won. So it means these two brothers who are claiming they were robbed, you know, needs to come together and they, you know, tell Nigerians who, which one among them was robbed. And All right, before, you, before, you, before you go too far, because I'd like us to draw more on the... Not only in Nigeria, sorry to but in the world. Nelson, sorry to button. Before you go too far, because I'd like us to draw more on the economic implications of these uh, purpose of issues. But I'm, I'm focused more on the... A statement or the contentions of the aggrieved parties. You are saying that they are aggrieved on the basis of their personal opinion of what should be. But they've raised concerns as regards the beavers not working in different polling units of the malpractices that took place during the elections. Would you say these are constitutionally irrelevant uh, concerns? Yes, if you can hear me very well. The Constitution requires an election to be conducted in substantial compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. And when we say substantial compliance, the election was conducted in 176,606 polling units. And if you want to say the election was not conducted in substantial compliance, then you have to itemize any polling units you feel in you know, electoral malpractices or court. The issue of beavers, the be Nelson, okay, some uh, challenges with the uh, network provider there, but of course this is a conversation that has to be had, especially when we look at the implications that all of these uh, mm -hmm. disputes, courts, cases would have on the economy uh, looking at the fact that apart from the Labour Party and the PDP, there are also some concerned parties, especially uh, you know, those who observe the elections, who have raised some concerns saying that uh, the Electoral Act wasn't followed dutifully. Uh, the Electoral Act talks about how the INEC chairman is supposed to lay down rules. The election is supposed to go by the rules laid down by the electoral umpire, which is the INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission. And we had the INEC chairman say that areas where the beavers was not being used or areas where uh, the beavers was used and the results were not uploaded, the elections may be considered as not to have been held in those polling units. But, of course, that was not what happened. And this has raised some concerns and contentions at the heart of Nigerians and, of course, aggrieved political parties. And uh, has you know, Hello, Bola. impact. Hello, Bola. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Please, what you are saying is totally wrong. Okay. Please don't misinform, uh, let, don't misinform Nigerians. Yes, don't misinform. I was an INEC accredited, accredited observer for that election. Okay. The rule says that. Anywhere the beavers is not used, election must not hold. Exactly. And where they were violent, where they were violent, the INEC, you know, rescheduled elections for the second day, which was the 26th. A case in point is Bayelsa State, where about 141 polling units. So are you aware that there are places where the election still did not hold, despite the fact that uh, you know the um, INEC because INEC officials did not appear at all. There was no postponement; they just didn't hold elections in those areas. What I'm, what I'm telling you, and I want us all to be educated, is that elections were supposed to have been conducted in 176,606 polling units. So if elections did not hold in polling units, it is not left for aggrieved parties to come to court with evidence. It is not for you to continue to help them parrot what cannot be substantiated. We saw the uh, party agents of political parties at the National Coalition Center making allegations 
and the national chairman and the national chief returning officer ask them to provide evidence to substantiate whatever they are saying and what they did next was to work out so if somebody is making an allegation it beyond on him to provide evidence so please if you don't have your evidence don't help them in parroting but, 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 but do you also do you also you know, know that, that one of the concerns society, that they are raising is the fact that some figures that were given by the INEC chairman were figures not uploaded on the IREF portal. And the, the one of the, you know, uh, electoral act, hold on please, Bola, was, that, was that if hello. a result is not uploaded hello. on the IREF portal, it shouldn't hello. hold as a polling unit result. Hello. Well, we, we cannot go on and on over this because Hello. we've not even been able to touch on the main issue. I guess uh, we'll just have to leave it there because aside the fact that we are pressed for time, the internet is also messing up with the conversation. So we'll probably have you some other time on this uh, particular issue. Uh, Nelson Ekujumi, political and public affairs analyst, thank you so much for your time on the show. Well, still to come back to the break, the Stambik IBTC Purchasing Index PMI report has indicated that substantial declines were seen in both output and new orders, while firms scaled back their purchasing activity and employment, saying companies were also impacted by shortages of fuel, which added to price pressures and led to supplier delivery delays. We'll take a detailed look at this after the break. Please stay with us.